I must confess that I don't really know very much about Saint Mother uh, Mary Guerin. I have not come across any biography of hers. But we can gain a lot of insight into her from the readings that we are given for her feast day. And so in the first reading, from the Song of Songs, the bride says, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm. Stern as death is love. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. And so this reading tells us that Mother Theodore Guerin was a woman of deep love, a love that deep waters could not quench nor floods sweep away. And how did she get this love? Paul tells us that the love of God, this is in Romans 5, the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. The Spirit is first given to us in baptism and above all in confirmation. But he's also deepened within us each time we receive Holy Communion or the Sacrament of Reconciliation. A special love is poured into the hearts of spouses who receive the Sacrament of Matrimony. In other words, the power is there. But the power and the grace do not make the act of love for you. We have to choose to love. Every virtue is a choice that we make. You don't believe until you choose to believe, until you choose to say, I believe in God. We can, of course, just rattle it off by rote, not really meaning it. But when we choose with an act of will to believe, every time we make that choice, faith grows. The same is true of love. Every time you choose to love, your love grows. And that is why Sometimes brides, wives say to their husbands, do you love me? And the husband will say, well, kind of huffy, well, of course I love you. But you never tell me. Yes, if you love someone, you need to tell that person, I love you. Yes, you can love by service. You can love by being faithful to your responsibilities, and that's essential. But also, it's true that we can fall into a routine and go through the motions without really choosing to love. Every day, we need to tell God, I do believe you love me. And I thank you for your love. I want your love and I need your love. Years ago, <clears throat> we have at Catholic Family Land these 
week-long Holy Family Fests in which people come from all over the country and spend a week with us. We generally have five of these fests every summer. We have a week-long fest beginning in June, and then we take a week off to get ready for the next one, and then another fest and so on, until we've done five, the last one taking place in August. And one day, <clears throat> well, we priests there, we hear confessions, and we try to recruit other confessors to come and help us because we get a lot of confessions. There are anywhere from 500 to 900 or even more people. Last year we had close to 1,000 and one of the fests. So you can imagine, there's a lot of confessors needed. Anyway, one year I was hearing confessions, and it struck me, I don't what, know what uh, touched it off, but I began to wonder, do people really believe that God loves them? So I started asking people, do you really believe God loves you? And it was amazing how many people said, you know, Father, I have trouble believing that. That God really knows who I am. And also, I've been such a sinner, how can he love me? Well, of course, I would say, well, you know, God doesn't love you because you deserve it. He loves you because he's merciful and because he's good. You need every day to tell God, I do believe you love me. And then, as so often happens when I hear confessions, later I say, wow, that was good advice. I need to do that myself. Because the priest hears, when the priest hears confession, he's given the grace to give good advice, encouragement to the penitent. And things will pop into the priest's head that he's never thought of before. And that's why I frequently experience that. And I have to say, gee, good Lord, what you told me to say, I know you want me to do that too. And so anyway, we need to tell God every day, I do believe you love me. Please send me your spirit and you, Holy Spirit, pour the love of God into my heart. Because without you, I can do nothing. But then I need to make the choice to love God with all my heart. Every day, I need to tell God, even many times a day, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I do love you. I choose to love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. I don't have to feel it because love doesn't consist primarily in feelings. Love can, it's great when the feelings are there. It makes love a lot easier. But oftentimes the feelings are not there. You feel dry. Like St. Teresa of Calcutta. We know from her biography that she went through 40 years in which she didn't feel any love at all. She felt just the opposite. She felt as though everything she was doing was useless, a waste of time. That was the feeling she was tormented with. But she knew it wasn't true. She knew that she was doing what God wanted her to do. 
And so even though she didn't feel love, she believed it. And she gave love in return. Every day, we need to tell God, I do believe you love me. And I choose to love you with my whole heart, soul, and strength. Mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit. I don't have to feel it. I do need to choose it. And every time you make that choice, your love grows. Every time you choose to believe, your faith grows. Every time you choose to trust. So often in confession, I hear people tell me, I didn't trust. I accuse myself of not trusting God, not trusting his plans for me. And I would say, well, you need to choose to trust. You don't have to feel it. Trust doesn't consist in a feeling. It's great when you feel trust, but you trust when you choose to trust, even if the feeling is not there. And every time you choose to trust, your trust grows. And I can tell you from my own experience, this works. This is true. Years ago, I used to be embarrassed to come into the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament because I would feel so unworthy. I was a sinner. I wasted time, wasted talents, refused to follow inspirations. And so I would walk into the presence of the Blessed Sacrament with my eyes down. Now, I'm not a person who hears words from God. Some people do. I'm not one of them. But one day as I walked into the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, I knew God was speaking to me. I didn't hear any words, but I knew he was telling me that it's true. You're not worthy of me, and you can't make yourself worthy of me. That's true. But I can. I'm God. I can make you worthy of me. Just ask me. And I said, is it that easy? That's when I learned that I needed to start saying, Lord, make me worthy of you. Pour your love into my heart. Send me this Holy Spirit. Help me to love you and to have the communion with you that you want to have with me, which is far greater than anything I can imagine. Now, <clears throat> I no longer go into the Lord's presence with fear and trembling. I'm so unworthy. I know I'm not, but that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me because I believe that he loves me, even though I don't deserve it. He loves me because he's merciful. He loves me because he's good. He doesn't love me because I deserve it. I don't. I know I don't. That doesn't bother him. He loves me anyway. And so now it's a joy to visit him in the Blessed Sacrament because I know he's glad to see me. He loves me, even though I don't deserve it. So I share these things with you. If you have 
maybe similar temptations? Because the adversary will always be there to say, how could God love you? Look what you've done. That's the adversary. That's not Jesus. And so, yes. We need to listen to the responsorial psalm. Listen to me, daughter. Listen to me, son. See and bend your ear. God loves you. And another thing we learn about Saint Mother Theodore, that even though I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Oh yeah. That she gave up marriage, not because marriage is not precious and wonderful, but because she heard the call of the Lord to be a special sign of God's love. As Jesus said, some are incapable of marriage. Some do not marry because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Second Vatican Council points out that those who have given up marriage for the sake of the kingdom have given up a very good thing. But they are signs. All of us who've done that, we are signs of the way it's going to be in heaven. Because Jesus said, in heaven, they don't marry and give in, and give in marriage. They don't keep having sexual relations and having more children. They are like the angels in heaven. That's what Mother Theodore, Saint Mother Theodore Guerin, teaches us by her life. As she was on earth, and as she now is in heaven, so each of you and I will be in heaven too. Not that we won't love each other, of course, we will love each other in heaven. We'll love each other as brothers and sisters with a deep love, a total love. But it won't be a spousal love. That love will be for Jesus and Jesus for us. We will be in heaven, the bride church, with that spousal communion with the divine bridegroom for which we have been created. Lord, pour out upon us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you who are the eternal, uncreated, immaculate conception of the Father and the Son's love for each other, pour that love into our hearts. Come into our hearts. Possess us. Guide us. Drive us in love. Make us burn with the love you want us to have.